Sorry about the loudness. It's uh, really, really hot out here right now. No uh, gatekeeper here. We got a SB201 here. Two 572 Vs. And uh, we are replacing the uh, power supply board. It's got direct fire filter caps, bleeder resistors, etc. Because at least three or four of these caps are gone. They are gone. This is an old amplifier, so that's not too too uncommon. We will be replacing it with this beautiful board right here. Very, very nicely done. And the guy that designed it is so unselfish, he doesn't even have his uh, name on there. Ain't that something else? There's actually people out there that's that unselfish. They're just trying to uh, give to the ham community without wanting anything back or any or the radio community in, in full. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing done. Wish it was just as easy as unscrewing this and pulling it up, but no, it is not. So we'll be back. The old board is out. Woo! Look at these blader resistors. How hot they got the board on there. <laughs> Looks like they're going with a little bit higher on 100Ks instead of 30s. Oh boy, it's a lot more in, uh, in depth than I, well, I knew it was going to be a, a good bit, but yeah, I didn't think I was going to have to remove the actual front panel, but yeah, man, having to take it apart a good bit. Now let's get the new board installed. When I come back, we should all be ready to rock and roll, man. I uh, found a couple other things uh, wrong, which we will uh, cover when I return. Uh, I made a quick decision to upgrade the hardware on the board to stainless steel and socket hex bit will make it a little easier for me to fork it down. All right. All right. The board is in, installed. Looks beautiful. Got the front back on, knobs back on, all that fun, tedious work. Uh, here is two issues I'm seeing back here. We've got a 33 ohm resistor back here that's seen some better days. Probably still good, but not really liking that. And we've got a cap right here that's blown and silvered up like a bone pretty good. So we're going to get these replaced. Tank coils for each band looks pretty good. As long as I don't see any issues, I don't see any major issues needing to hook up uh, my analyzer and checking all that but if we need to we'll get around to it I'm not a genius with these amps I'm still learning them as time goes on but I absolutely love them without these we wouldn't have what we have today everybody oh GK said that tell you one good guy, one guy that knows these in and out is Mr. BBI been meaning to check out some of his videos. I noticed he's did a lot of 201s. A lot of these Heath Kit type style amplifiers. So it looks like he's pretty much uh, figured them out, kind of like uh, me with my Texas Stars. <laughs> but this right here is a definitely a, a, an upgrade from the Texas Star, I'll tell you that. Awesome amps, man. If they're, if they're done right, they're working right, they were built properly. That'll last you forever. Just like my tin tag right there, man. That thing right there is a beautiful, beautiful machine. Beautiful machine. We'll be back. Alrighty. She's all back together now. Let's fire her up. 
Buddy. Let's see, we're sitting there at about 2300 volts. Uh, a little bit under 23. About 2250 or so. Both the tubes are lit up fine. It appears that we are getting our high voltage, so the board seems to be working well. The big test is to make sure she is working properly after we put some RF in her, which we will do that tomorrow. I am off to bed now. I'm going to get up here in a few hours. Boy, I wish this was my amp. I love them. We'll be back. All right, brother, we're all all done here <clears throat> I thought this uh, I thought this particular model had a soft spot uh, start not a soft start but a, a, a soft key but it, it doesn't so uh, right now I've just got a uh, foot pedal hooked up to it to the back and uh, I could easily just uh, hook it up to the back of the radio but I just had one laying right here so I plugged it up well, anyway, I did something special just for you, man. Uh, I've had this amp, this amp, I've had this, this radio right here for probably about six, seven years, maybe even eight. I bought this thing for about $820. I'm talking about a week or so after it come out. I bought it actually at the local ham fest that we have over here. And uh, I had thought I'd be out this garage and have my own shop by now, which I don't. And I had told myself, well, I'm just going to save this for when I get an enclosed shop, and I'll hook it up. And uh, as time went on, I got me a couple other radios that I've been using. And this has just been sitting in the box. But so I didn't have to unhook uh, my Yezu over there. I uh, went ahead and brought it out and hooked it up. Scheme through the booklet here a little bit, man. And uh, I like I like the way it's set up, man. I'd, actually, I'd love to have this joker in my mobile. <laughs> if I had enough room, get the mountain kit and put this bad boy in the mobile. So anyway, I've got the, uh, we're on uh, 20 meters. That's just where I've got it right now, just for testing. And uh, I've got the power up to about 80% to where it's doing. Oh, test, 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 test. We're on the dummy load. Oh, test, 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 test. About 50, 60 watts. So we're driving at about half of what, about where I would be driving it, honestly. And uh, I know what this amplifier is capable of doing, but I just wanted to uh, show you that it's working. Everything's working great with it. You know, of course, I could sit here and push them, push it real hard and probably get it up to a 1,000 watts, but I personally would not run this beautiful piece of art of history like that. If, 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 if it was mine, I would have probably run about five, 600 watts. If it was mine, that's what I would do. So anyway, she's working, man. We got her tuned up here. Taking a look right here at the 500 watt slug. Dang, I need to clean my meters, man. The thing's getting a little dirty. I'll go ahead and do that after this video. I haven't made a video in about a month. <laughs> so anyway, 500 watt slug. We're looking at PEP. P -E -P. So uh, just take a look at the middle scale there. Go oh, testing, 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 testing. This thing's talking. Oh, this thing's talking, no doubt about it. Oh, right there about 160 watts RMS. So she's fixed up, man. Absolutely beautiful. The new board is working great. Those 572Bs are absolutely beautiful. Not cheap either. And uh, I was taking a look at the voltage too, uh, under key. She's doing exactly what a good uh, unregulated high voltage supply will do. 
she's only backing back to about 100 volt, uh, volts about 100 150 volts going by the meter so that is great um i've actually never even worked on one of these before this is my first one i've actually worked on and uh, about the only thing i really noticed with it is is this uh, rel relative power doesn't seem to be working but there again i may just not know how to work it um I know we've got an RF power sense right here, and it's got a SWR, so I was kind of curious. See, I'm not on the foot pedal right now. Oh, testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, testing. So I don't really know about that. But the plate voltage is showing fine. The grid current is showing fine. Uh, high voltage, of course, is showing fine. So everything's going good. The plate and grid's going to show when you transmit. Uh, SWR and, and relative power, not too sure about those. But I know with these older amp, uh, amps, you know, some of those smaller parts of the circuit will go out. On you. So, all right, let's go ahead and put the high voltage plate back on here. First, I'm going to turn it off and... Uh, Actually, I'm going to clean that up a little bit for you before I put it on there. But uh, I'm going to turn it off and let these uh, caps get discharged uh, pretty good before I even getting anywhere near inside there. But I'm very happy I was able to finally get it done for you, Rick. Thanks for hanging in there with me, man. I hope you work a lot of DX for this beautiful beast right here, my friend. Have fun. Glad to get it fixed for you. This may be something I do want to get more into in the future. Is working on these tube type boxes because so you got to have somebody to keep them, keep them alive out there. Because without these, we wouldn't have all the solid state stuff, the BJT, LD Moss. We wouldn't have none of that without these. This is what started it. Shout out to Mr. B, B to the I. Like your videos on these things, brother. I've learned a lot from you. Still need to watch a couple more. I definitely, uh, before I even got to this thing good, I popped it. I saw he had one video on uh, on a, on a SB201. And uh, hey man, I ain't, I ain't afraid to admit it. I ain't Superman, I don't know everything. So uh, that's what a smart man does. That's, that's smart to me, doing your research before you jump into something if you've never touched it. You know, you know, some people say, hey, if you've worked on one amp, you've worked on them all. That's uh, definitely not true. <laughs> not in this. Not in this hobby. That's that's, that's not true. Especially when you get into the high-voltage uh, amplifiers. So, uh, yeah, I checked his video out, and uh, he did a nice little repair on one. So, uh, good deal, man. Just had to give him a shout out there. All right. OGK. We're gone. Bye-bye, y'all. 73s.